Hey everyone, Mike here from Watch It Paint It, and in this video I'll be painting one of the new 9th edition Chaos War Dogs from Warhammer 40k. In the previous video I showed sub-assembly and magnetization of the weapons, so the next step is to prime the model. I like to use poster putty to hold the pieces to sticks and bits of wood for priming. Some of the bits, like the top gun, can just be pushed into place. For the arms, I'll attach those to wooden sticks, like pencils or chopsticks, and for the body, I'm jamming an army painter bottle into the hole underneath, and then I'm priming all of the pieces with lead belcher spray. Now I want this to be a semi-speed paint, so I'll be using army painter speed paints for some of this model, starting with sand golem. Right now there's a lot of silver going on, and I want to break that up with some color accents. The first of which will be a gold color on the joints of the legs and arms. Next I want to paint the armor plates on the War Dog. I'm going to start off by a base coating all the plates with two layers of Abaddon Black. I've got this paint thinned down with roughly equal parts water so we can avoid brush strokes on these big flat areas. You're still going to get a bit, but two to three thin layers of the black is going to create a nice matte even finish. I'll be using the black paint on the armor plates for the legs, the claw, the shoulder pads and the top half of the head as well as the minigun's body. Okay, now that the armor is base coated and dry, I'm going to use an easy but effective way of painting those same areas. I'm using an old frayed up brush that I use for dry brushing, but I'll be stippling on the paint. The first layer is going to be mostly corn red, thinned down with a bit of water and with a bit of the black paint added into it. I've dipped my brush in the paint and dabbed it off on paper towel. Now I'm just tapping it onto the armor plates, making random splashes of color. I'm avoiding getting too close to the edges where the trim is. I want to leave a dark line between the trim and the armor plates. That way I don't need to add a wash later to create that layer of shadow. Once I have that first layer on, I'm coming back in with a second layer. And this time I'm focusing the paint more towards the center of the armor plates. And then I'm going to repeat that process on the rest of the armor plates. Finally, I'm taking some pure corn red and then doing a final stipple near the middle, just to give a bit of highlighting. And on the armor plates with harder edges, like the legs, I'm focusing this paint just on the raised edges of the armor. For the head, I'm putting the paint mostly on the top and on the raised brow around the eyes. Next I'm doing something very similar with the black areas of the armor. I'm stippling on a dark grey. This one is World War II German Grey from Vallejo, but it's very similar to Necromancer Cloak from Army Painter and Corvus Black from Games Workshop, if you have those colors instead. All of the trim is going to be painted with Balthazar Gold. When using this, I'm not trying to get on the side of the trim where I just put the red and black paints. I don't want to risk getting metallic colors on those areas, so this is going on the top of the trim and around its outside edges. I'm also going to use this as an accent color on a few of the sticky outy bits, pipes and doodads on the night, just to give it more visual interest rather than all of the silver. Now that the majority of the color is on, I'm going to be using two different washes on the metal painted parts only. The red and black areas don't really need any washes. The first is Nuln Oil Gloss. This is going over every part of the night that's far from the ground and might have the least amount of dirt on it. So the arms, upper legs and most of the body. The Nuln Oil Gloss is going to give everything an oily sheen and create a strong contrast. One tip for adding wash to large models like this is to focus on one body part at a time. Let the wash settle and then clean up any heavy pooling and remove excess wash from large flat areas with a damp brush.
For all the more weathered parts of the night, I'll be using a mixture of washes. Three parts black, two parts brown, and one part blue. This is great for making metallics look old and dirty. This will be going over the claw, the feet, and the tip of the minigun. If you want your entire night to look weather-worn, you could of course put this wash over the whole thing. I'm also putting this wash over all of the chains and skulls. One of the few areas left to paint are all of the cables hanging off of the night. I'll be painting these using another contrast style paint. This one is Gravelord Grey from Army Painter. Next I'm going to do some edge highlighting, and most of my edge highlights are done with a dry brush. If you do it right you can get really clean edges, and it's far less frustrating than trying to run the side of a normal paintbrush over an edge, unless of course you have lots of practice at it. I've been doing edge highlights for many years, and I still get my best results from a dry brush. For all of the metal areas I'm using a bright silver. This is Shining Silver from Army Painter. I'm using a small flat brush, and I'm always moving it perpendicular to the edges that I'm brushing. I always test the brush on my hand first, and if I see even a tiny bit of paint, I wipe the brush on paper towel. For the face of the war dog, I'm using Bugman's Glow, something brighter than the corn red that'll stand out. <laughs> Lastly, for the black painted areas, I'll be using Celestra Grey. Now, my Celestra Grey is all clumped up and chunky, useless for normal painting, but totally fine for dry brushing. So if you have any dried out GW paints, maybe don't throw them out right away. The brighter colors are still good for a while for dry brush colors. One of the final details is the skulls on the chains. I'm starting these off with a heavy dry brush of Death World Forest. Next I'm switching to a dark beige or bone color. This one is Vallejo's World War II beige. This time I'm doing a lighter dry brush and focusing this on the top of the skull and the facial features. And the last step is to paint the eyes. I'm starting off by putting two layers of white over each of the eyes. Once that's dried, I'm adding two to three layers of a fluorescent orange over the eye, though you could also use any color of a bright wash as well. I almost forgot, I'm using a bit of the corn red to paint the tips of the missiles. Okay, time for some glamour shots, but first I'm going to attach the knight to the base, hit it with a matte varnish, and then add a bit of mud to the ground. And here is the finished Chaos War Dog, ready to sow chaos across the battlefield. Thank you to all of our patrons for supporting us on Patreon, and thanks to Games Workshop for sending us an early copy of the Chaos Knight's army set. I hope you liked this video, and thanks for watching.